Hey everyone. Most of you know that I'm adopted. In this clip, I wanted to explore nature versus nurture. And although doubtful, I've seen it work where people from long lost families reunite from a social media post. So mine was a closed adoption and I didn't know much until I was 18 when the agency released some records to me. Apparently there was a fire and they lost a bunch of papers before they could be digitized. But I was able to learn a bit about my birth mother. Since I had her name and general idea of when she was born and where she might be, I was able to look her up when I got to law school in 2014. She had died the year before in 2013. I was too late. But on the death certificate, it listed her mother and father, so of course I looked them up because they would be my biological grandparents. It turns out that the two had never married. I looked at their records separately and could see why. My grandfather, Peter Arnold Winkler, has a spotless record. Sally Lee Verness, my grandmother, however, has quite the record, almost as entertaining as my birth mother, Deborah's. Deb's record was like cocaine, prostitution, more cocaine, more prostitution, let's uh, sprinkle in some burglary and grand theft, some weapons violations, deadly missile throws. I don't know, you know, she just really had a thing for throwing Molotov cocktails. The last arrest I see for Deb is in 2002. The first is from 1986. She would have been 24. So I can bet that these weren't her first crimes. Deb had me in 1988, making her about 26. Sally was born in 1943, and Deb was born in 1962, making Sally only 19. Peter was born in 1939, so he would have been about 23 when Deb was born. Although Deb spent most of her years in psych wards and juvenile detention centers until she began her life on the streets, she had been exposed to crime her entire life living with Sally. Sally either started committing crime or just started getting caught. Her felony record is impressive. I don't know if the record just stopped in 1979, but that's as far back as I could find them. She had gotten in trouble for forging checks multiple times in the 80s. In the later 90s and early 2000s, she was getting caught for fraudulent uses of credit cards. She had a few grand thefts from the 80s and 90s. She committed armed robbery in 1983, uh, and she was trafficking codeine and selling clonopin up until she was arrested again in 2006. Sally somehow got married and her last name changed to Cribbis in 1994. Peter married a woman named Margie. As of 2017, when I did this search, their last known location is Brandon in Hillsborough County, Florida, based on the deed of purchase in 2009. I have an address, phone number, email, but I'm too scared to try them. You can ignore an email or it lands in spam and is never seen. You can hang up on someone and block a number. You can snail mail a letter but not really have a way of knowing if it got to the right person. I don't know if Peter ever knew he had a grandchild because it is unknown if he maintained contact with Sally. It may be possible that he did not even know about Deb. So that left me with a dilemma. I had originally feared that if I had found Deb earlier and she had cleaned up, that she wouldn't want to meet me because I would only be a bad memory to her. But since she is deceased, I have always wanted to at least see a picture of her. I am choosing to try to find Peter because his name was the name I was originally given when I was born, Benet Winkler. But he's 80 now, and I don't want the family to think there's some fraud trying to sneak into the will or something mean-spirited. So I don't know if the 
timing is proper, but considering Deb is already dead, I don't feel like I can wait much longer, and I do not believe that finding Sally would give me much closure. Um, I think it's actually amazing that I committed some of the same crimes prior to having knowledge of my mother and grandmother's records. No, I did not torch a building, and I'm not a thief. I have stated before that I used to deal in narcotics and prostitution. This brings me to the question of nature versus nurture. One conclusion that makes sense to me is if you don't nurture someone the right way, the way that individual needs to be loved, then they will revert back to who they were by default based on where they came from. I believe that's what happened to me because I was raised completely opposite of how I turned out. Based on my previous videos, I wouldn't say the house I grew up in was nurturing, but it kept you alive and it gave you a good chance at a future because you were taught that the only thing that mattered was making money to take care of yourself because no one else would be there to help you. I don't know if this message was given to anyone else or just me. But anyway, I went to Catholic school and to church every weekend. As a child, I supported the D.A.R.E. program and I was super anti-drug because I did not want to be like my birth mother. But I ended up just like her and my grandmother. I have not done any research on this topic though, so these are just my own opinions. I would love to hear yours. So I don't want to hire like a private investigator, not like I could because I'm, I have no money, but I wanted to hear from you guys. Are there any other adopted people subscribed to this channel that have had luck finding biological family members? If so, how? If you were in my shoes, given the information I just said, what would you do? Do I let the sleeping dog lay, or should I begin to search? I know the outcome may not be what I hoped for, but maybe it would provide some closure. Has it for any of you? Okay, everyone. Remember, please click the subscribe button and stay tuned. Thanks.